Hello, welcome to Mindless Crafting. My name is Bill. Today we're going to be doing a relatively short video tutorial demonstrating how to use Google Docs in order to manipulate uh, your PNG files in order to arrange, uh, resize in using the drag and drop method. We're going to start from the beginning though. A lot of people have Google, they use it, they go to it, but they don't realize that they have Google Docs and a host of other programs in the back side of it that they can use it to do a lot of different things. We're only going to focus on Google Docs though. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to have to do, obviously, go to the Google.com. When you get there, you're going to go right here. See this little box right here? When you click on it, it's just, it'll say Google Apps. Once I click on that box, this will come up. It has a lot of different things, search, YouTube, play, et cetera, et cetera, Gmail. We're gonna scroll down till we see docs right here. I'm gonna click on that and this opens. It'll say, it has a myriad of different type of docs, blank or whatever you may have done before. I'm gonna click on the blank plus here. I now have an untitled document. It, you can name it yourself manually, but what usually happens is it names itself after the first thing that you start typing. But uh, and then it saves automatically, even if you don't try to save it, it'll save unless you unless you delete it. Okay, now that we've done that, let's open up a folder. I've already opened up a folder, but let's uh, show you how that works. Like here's a folder right here on your computer. You've already saved it. Okay, in order to save it, you would go to the desktop or wherever you're going to save your folder, right click, type it, click on new folder. This comes up, you'll name it, whatever. I just put GGGG, save it. There it is. Okay, fine. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Move it to trash. I don't need that. I just wanted to show you how that works. To bring this up like this, you'll double click on your folder and it comes up and you'll, you'll position it over here where you can manipulate. Now, I've already taken the liberty of creating one to be in a state of readiness. Okay, now that I have my folder open, what I did with Google, it was like this, and I simply grabbed it from the edge and slid it over like this until I got it about where I wanted it. It doesn't have to be that large, in all honesty. Okay, I go over here, and the folder that I've, cre I've created, let's say I've created uh, Z Digital File. Okay, I have another one I created called Digital Goodies for a previous tut tutorial, but Z Digital File will work just fine. Okay, I've downloaded my files, my digital files, and I'm gonna click on the folder, not the zip file. The zip file merely holds all of these files. We're gonna click on the folder. I'm gonna pick something out. You know what? I don't wanna do it just for you. Let me go up to Digital Goodies, to the Bomber Yards Digital stamp set that we're featuring at mindlesscrafting.com. I'm going to select one of these images. Let's say the, mm, I'll take the bridge. So I pull the bridge over here, release it. It comes into the document construct. If I click on it, you see it has this bounding box around it. This blue bounding box. Now if I try to move it, I can't move it. Now, why is that? That's because this first, you have three circles down here. The first one says inline, the next one says wrap text, the third one says break text. Inline won't allow you to move this. Go to the third, wrap text is not gonna do it either. I mean, I could move it, but I don't wanna do that one. I wanna do break text where I'm completely out. Okay, now I can click on the outside of it. I'm free to move it however I want to. Uh, let's talk about a couple other things right now. Let's talk about uh, resizing. Now, there's a ruler up here that shows you how wide the page is. What, one through seven inches. The page is eight by 11, more than like, like a normal page. But if you're making a card, let's say A4, chances are pretty strong, you know, it's gonna be about four and a half by five and a quarter or something like that. Just go to the corner of any, either one of these corners of the bounding box. You're gonna grab it, and if you pull it in or out, it's gonna either enlarge it or it's gonna reduce it in size, and everything stays the same size proportionately. See what I'm saying? Now, 
if I grab the middle right here, it's not proportional. It, it stretches it out of sync. Now, if you want to get it back to the original, you may try to drag it, but you're not quite sure how it looks. I can come right up here. You have undo and you have redo. So if I click undo, it goes to that one and it go back here. It, it keeps undoing until I decide to go back to where I want it to be. Okay. Now let's make it smaller because my card is it's much going to be much larger than my card. So let me come down like this. Uh, that'll do. That looks pretty good. So I have a bridge right here. I want to create a scene. I love creating scenes. Let me bring another image into the fold right quick. Um, well, before I do that, let's talk about rotation. You see this box right here? The blue box right here. This blue dot. If I grab that, I can turn it. See? So the image doesn't have to be static. I just want to show you that real quick. That's pretty simple right there. Okay, now let's grab another image. I'm going to get uh, the helicopter. I love this helicopter right here. I'm going to bring it in. It comes in pretty large. I probably won't want it that large. But here's something to notice in terms of uh, perspective. You notice the larger the image in front is, the further the image in back appears to be. It creates that the illusion of distance. If I take the helicopter, click on it so I have the blue bonding box around it. If I decrease it in size, it probably went to the top. It did. I'm going to decrease it in size some more. Now, when I slide it down, oh, I can't slide it now, can I? Why is that? Because it has in line and I need to break the text. Remember that. If you go up there to try to slide that image and it won't go 999 times out of a thousand is because you have this inline uh, thing selected as opposed to the break text. Now you notice when I pull it down now the helicopter it looks and the bridge look closer. If I put it up you, now when you're trying to move something make sure that the bounding box is around the thing you're trying to move. So I'm going to carefully make sure it's on helicopter. Now I can move the helicopter. If I go over here, the helicopter is behind that bridge. If you want the bridge to be in front, just click it. Hold up. It's like this. See how that, and I have to move it also. Now the helicopter appears to be behind the bridge. Because I'm going to click on this, move it. The moment you move it even slightly, if I just click on it, it still stays there. But if I move it even a slightly, it goes in front. See how that works? Okay. I'm going to bring uh, something else in. Let's say I bring this boat right here. Okay, the boat came in kind of big. No problem. Let's grab a corner. We're going to reduce it in size. Can I move it? No, I can't because I need to move right to the third one and select break text. Now I'm able to move it. I want to bring the boat right here. I want it slightly in front. I kind of like that. But here's the thing. What if that helicopter, I want it, instead of going from, uh, from right to left, I want it going from uh, to the right, from the left to the right. I will click on this, make sure I have the bounding box selected. Okay. I'm going to change the direction of it. Now, how do I do that? Let's look at some, some, some verbiage first. This is going to really help you out. I looked this up and just type into Google, uh, how to flip an image in, in Google docs or something like that. And this, this information will come up, but it's pretty simple. They'll say number one, copy the image by clicking on it and then pressing control plus C. Uh, you can do control plus C if you like uh, com com commands, which I do. I like shortcut commands, but the bottom line is if you right click, a uh, copy will come up and just do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click on this, make sure that bounding box is around it. I'm going to right click, select copy. Okay, now what do we do? Step two, go to insert drawing new. 
and then place the cursor on the drawing panel and press Control plus V and paste the image there. Basically, just right click and paste. So let's do that. Insert drawing and new. Let's go back. So if I try, if as long as this bounty box is around here, if I try to go up here to insert drawing, is not going to show. See how it's how it's grayed out. You have to actually click inside of the construct and make sure that that bounding box is not around this. Once you see that the bounding box is not around that image, now you can go up to insert. Drawing is no longer grayed out. Go to new, select it. We click it. We're going to right click, paste. So now we have that. Okay. I'm going to slide this over here. So you only saw you can read this. Now it says go to actions, rotate, then select whichever thing you want us to do, whether you flip it horizontally, vertically, what have you. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back over here. It's selected. I'm going up here to actions. I'm going to rotate down here. Now I can rotate clockwise 90 degrees, counterclockwise 90 degrees, flip horizontally or vertically. Let's do all of them. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Voila. There you go. Now I can go back here and go like this. That's more steps. Why don't I just do like this? Hit undo. Now I'm going to actions, rotate, rotate counterclockwise. Okay, fine undo let's go back again I'm gonna go actions rotate flip horizontally see how I turned around uh, now I'm gonna hit command Z because I like shortcuts command Z command Z see it, get, it keeps going redoing slide it back go actions rotate flip vertically you may want it upside down of course, I can always go, when it's like this, I can always go like that. The main thing I'm trying to do is make it go from left to right like it's doing. So if, as long as I'm happy, now you can resize while you're over here too. As long as you're happy, you can now click save and close. Okay, it comes up. And now, instead of going from left to right like this, it's going from, or right to left, it's going from left to right. So let's click on it. Can I move it? As long as you see that, you know the answer. No, you can't. Okay, so let's come right down here. Select break text. And now I'll come down here. I'm going to go in front of the... Bam. Let's see if I'm happy with that. Um, there you go. And that's pretty much all you have to do. That 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 tells you everything you need to do. It, when you're ready to print it, you go to file. Of course, you can do a lot of different things. You can download it, different forms, etc., etc. But let's now play around with these commands right here, and just kind of play sometimes just to see what happens. But I've shown you the main things you need to know. We're going to go to file. I'm going to print. Make sure you have the, your printer selected. I have two different printers. I can save it as a PDF, save it to Google Drive, but I'm going to print it out on a page because I want it coming out of the page so I can go ahead and get busy playing around. So I will click print and that's how that works. All right. So that should hold you over in, uh, in Google Docs. So, so far what we've learned, we learned how to, to go to Google, how to go to uh, the Google apps section and access Google Docs, open it up, get the construct. We have our two file, open up our folder, go back and forth between the folder and our program right here, Google Docs. Once we find it, we download our images by dragging and dropping them into Google Docs. We learned how to resize them, how to rotate them and turn them around by grabbing a circle at the top of the box. We learned how to place the images behind or in front of one another by making sure that the proper bounding box is selected and making sure that if, if you want this in back or front, grab it and drag and now it's behind. And we learned how to go up to and use the drawing function, selecting new. And once we're done saving that image in, our, in, in the new form that we've that we want it rotate it whether it's uh, flip horizontally vertically or what have you so now if you have any questions just let me know and uh 
Feel free to go to MindlessCrafting.com, look at some of our digital stamps, and I believe you'll be happy. We're going to constantly be adding more and more digital stamps. If you have any questions on how to operate anything, we have other videos on how to use pages, Microsoft Word, a free program called OpenOffice. OpenOffice is also exactly like LibreOffice. So you can download either one. Once you watch the video on OpenOffice, you automatically know how to use LibreOffice. So get busy.